Time to escape. Escape from now, from here, from yourself. Columbia invites you to voyage into the realms of the imagination. Each week we present adventures of men and women who escape into the misty land between the credible and the incredible. Tonight's story of escape tells of a dummy with a wooden head and wooden arms and even a wooden heart who served a master until one day this master heard him say, I've had enough of you. I don't need you anymore. Escape now into the strange adventure of Eric Hickson and his dummy, Toby. This is a story told backstage in many an English music hall in London Cabaret when the performers are sitting around waiting to go on or when they finish their evening show. Nobody ever knew very much about Eric Hickson, though many of the turns had played on bills with him. Mostly small-time acts, for it was only at the end of a long, difficult trail that Hickson reached the fashionable West End. It was the night after Hickson's opening at the Kit Kat Club. The act which preceded his was just finishing. But instead of taking his position in the wings, Hickson was still sitting in his dressing room. On his knee was his partner, Toby, a small wooden ventriloquist dummy with a painted face. I say, Hickson, what's holding you up? You're on in a minute. Are we? Of course you are. We've got a splendid house out there and I want to introduce you. Wait, Piccolo. Well? We can't go on. What? We can't. It's quite impossible. What nonsense is this? You hear the dancers are going on. It's He's Toby, Piccolo. Toby, he refuses to talk. Toby, your dummy? Yes, I can't get a word out of him. Hickson, what is this? A rib? Certainly not. Well, you're a ventriloquist, aren't you? At least you were last night. <laughs> Let the customers talk and hold hands. Huh? The stage is just as empty and we're on it. Toby. Hickson, what the devil are you up to? Go on, go on, Bigelow. Get out there and tell them we're not appearing. So your dummy won't talk, won't he? It's the very first time he's spoken all evening. I swear it. Who'd want to say anything ever again after those reviews we got on our opening last night? He knows he's beyond his depth here, Bigelow. He's frightened. Stop this gagging of all nights when you should want to be particularly good with Mel Baxter in the house. Mel Baxter? The American ventriloquist? Yes, the star of the American wireless. And he married that gorgeous blonde in his last picture. Yes, she's with him at the table out there. Uh, what, oh, what kind of nonsense am I talking to this dummy? Dummy yourself. Go on, big mouth. Get out there and introduce her. I want to see Mel Baxter. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, before I present to you our next feature turn, I'd like to call on a distinguished artist who's here tonight. You've all heard him on the American Wireless and seen him in the American cinema. Mel Baxter! Stand up, Mel. Stand up and enjoy that well-known Kit Kat hospitality. Ah, oh, you very, very nice people. Thank you. Thank you. Always nice to visit London. And isn't that charming lady with you, Mrs. Baxter? That's right. Stand up and take a bow, baby. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Mrs. Baxter. Oh, Mel, did you bring your little pal, Muggsy Martin, along on this trip? No, no, I didn't. The little toothpick gets seasick. <laughs> oh, what a pity. Yeah, yeah, it is. He says every time he sees me, he gets seasick. <laughs> well, that gag's aged in the wood, but so's Muggsy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure Mrs. Baxter is a much pleasanter burden on your knee, Mel. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, and have fun. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring on an act that should make our American visitor feel lonesome for the missing Muggsy Martin, our own British ventriloquist, Eric Hickson and his talking timber, Toby! Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. 
Hey, Hickson, go easy on that good morning stuff. Why, Toby? That man over there looks like the truant officer. Oh, that shouldn't trouble you, Toby. You've been a very good boy, haven't you? Oh, yes, but I'm not in school. Do you mean to say you've left school? Oh, yes, appendicitis, you know. You left school because you have appendicitis? I don't have it. Can't spell it. <laughs> you know, Toby, Toby, I saw a very strange sight the other day. Oh, dear, 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 must we go on? Toby... I, I said I saw a very strange sight the other day. All right, all right, I'll go along with the gag. Talk about Muggsy Martin's jokes being aged in the wood. Toby. <laughs> Let's get on with it. You saw a very strange sight the other day. What was it? Twelve men standing under one umbrella, and not one of them got wet. And why not? It wasn't raining. <laughs> Did you hear that laugh, Fixum? They're forcing themselves to laugh. Do you blame them, Mr. Baxter? Toby, leave Mr. Baxter out of this. Leave me alone, Hickson. Oh, what about it, Mr. Baxter? Don't you feel sorry for me having to play along with Hickson's old jokes? Well, now, Toby, I don't know. I have great respect for old jokes. Old jokes are not to be laughed at. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, in fact, one of my favorite jokes is the old one about the man whose name was Joe Hitler, and he wanted to change his name. So the judge asked him what he wanted to change it to, and he said, George Hitler, because he was tired of people saying to him, Hello, Joe, what do you know? <laughs> oh, dear me, dear me, dear me. Is that strange sound laughter, Hickson? Yes. Thank you very much for your valuable contribution, Mr. Baxter. Oh, not at all, Mr. Hickson. I was just standing here with 11 other guys waiting for you to borrow another umbrella. <laughs> I suppose all your gags are original, Mr. Baxter. But of course, it's a gift. <laughs> and I've no doubt that you hang up your stockings for them every Christmas. Sure, and I always get sock gags. <laughs> when you try to top a real comedian, and Mr. Baxter will go right on top of you for the rest of the night. Give up and get off, Nixon. Give up and get off. <laughs> Mr. Baxter? Well? How do you do? Mind if we come in for a minute? All right. If you like. Oh, um, uh, this is my wife, honey, Mr. Hickson. Mrs. Baxter? Hello, Mr. Hickson. Won't you sit down? Just throw that dressing gown on the floor. Oh, you? thanks. Well, so this is your boy, huh? Nice carving job. <laughs> I'm very handsome. Uh, don't you think so, Mrs. Baxter? You're a dream man, Toby. <laughs> Who made him for you? Don't put your hands on him. Oh, I'm sorry. Haven't you done enough damage tonight? Oh, now, look, Hickson, you asked for it out there. I asked for nothing. It was Toby got me into that. Toby? <laughs> oh, now, Toby, aren't you ashamed? I asked you I... not to touch him. Mr. Hickson, you don't think Mel would steal him, do you? I can take no chances. Well, you sure take him seriously, don't you? Well, relax. I do all right with Muggsy, my own dummy. So I've heard. Yes. And you sure surprised me with that little act out front. Your own part in it surprised me. My part? Well, you wanted some kind of comeback, didn't you? You asked for it, Mr. You needn't Hickson. explain anything. You see, Mr. Baxter, Hickson's attitude requires a certain amount of sympathy. Uh, he's quite aware he's not our equal. Oh, now, look, Keep quiet, Hickson. Toby. Mr. Baxter, just why did you come to my dressing room? Well, uh, professional courtesy. If you've come here to make some sort of a bargain to buy Toby, it's no use. You can never have him. Now, wait, Hickson. Yes, wait, Hickson. I won't have it, Toby. Never, never. Whatever the Baxters have to say to me is my affair. Uh, why don't you pretend you're a gentleman and make a graceful exit? Oh, really, Toby, if you're trying to make me look ridiculous... I'm succeeding. <laughs> yes, I know. Now go on over behind the screen and get your makeup off. Very well. But I warn you. Beat it! Uh, pay no attention to him, Mrs. Baxter. No, I don't. I don't understand. This fellow's amazing. No, oh, not at all. He's stupid, really. Constantly interfering in my affairs. Uh, Mrs. Baxter, now that we're alone, may I tell you something? Something I'm sure you've heard before. Well, what is it, Toby? You're very beautiful. I'm very fond of you, Mrs. Baxter. 
And whatever Hickson thinks, you're really a very nice woman. Oh, now look here. Mel, I don't like this. Hickson. Yes? Come out here. Well? What is it? Just how far do you want to carry a gag? A gag? Either you apologize to my apologize wife... Apologize for what? Really, Mr. Baxter, I don't know what you're talking about. Mel, let's leave. You're not going to leave me, are you, Mrs. Baxter? Please don't. Oh, you're a very funny guy, Hickson. Take me with you, Mr. Baxter. I just want to be near her. If you're afraid I'll make love to her, you needn't worry. I will. Okay, Hickson, you asked for it. No, Mel, don't hit him. Don't hit him. Oh, Mel. Mel, why did you do it? Hey, here now. Here now. Well, well, what's going on? I don't know what's eating this guy. A gag's a gag, but he doesn't know when to stop. Looks a bit done in. Well, he had it coming to him. Glad he didn't break the dummy when he fell. Yes, that would have been a shame. He's such a cute little fella. Oh, and you do care what happens to me. I love you, Mrs. Baxter. I love you. <laughs> Feeling all right again, old chap? Uh, yes, quite. Thank you, Piccolo. Oh, good night, then. No, it's not good night. This is goodbye. What's that? Yes, the manager sacked us, Toby and me. Oh, well, now that's a pity. Mm -hmm. Go on, say it. You're quite sure we had it coming to us. Well, you did go too far with the Baxter. I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with what Toby said. Oh, I it say. It was Baxter. It was Baxter who put those words into Toby's mouth. He's trying to steal him from me. Oh, now see here, don't... It took us 15 years to make the Kit Kat. And we had only two nights here. You just think what Toby and I have done together. We fought our way to the very top. After years of cheap, dirty music halls. Starving. Out at the elbow. Oh, you know what it's like, Bigelow. Always trying to perfect the act. <laughs> Toby's a partner anyone would want. And Baxter's no exception. All right, all right, old boy. Then you'd better take good care of Toby. No, never fear. I'll never fear. I shall. He's locked in my dressing room right now, and tonight and every other night we are going to sleep behind locked doors until Mel Baxter leaves London. <laughs> I want to talk to you. Mel, be careful. It takes him. And the door isn't locked. <gasps> Where is Toby? Get out, Hickson. I've come for Toby. Where is he? You've stolen Toby from me, and I've come to take him back. I haven't seen your dummy since we were in your dressing room tonight. You lie! You came and stole him from me whilst I was asleep. Sure, sure. I never travel without my burglar tools. Now listen, Hickson. I only knocked you down before, but this time I'm going to finish a job. Mel! I'll handle this my way, baby. No, no, Mel, look. On the floor. What? On the floor at the foot of my bed. Toby! What? Oh, Claudia, how did... Toby, there you are. I found you. Oh, my poor little Toby. He kidnapped you. Now, look, Hickson, I haven't the slightest idea how your Toby. dummy got here. Toby, Mel, speak look to how me. he's shaking that awful thing. Wake up, Toby. He's trying to wake it up. Oh, come now, you're not deceiving me. You know I'm here. Go away and leave me alone. I'm through with you, Hickson. I can't stand it, Mel. Easy, baby. Now, look here, Hickson. Maybe you're ill or mad or Ill. Something. You took Toby away from me, and you say I'm ill? I didn't take him. You brought him here. You must have. Maybe while you were walking in your sleep. Ha. Mel, he's got a gun. He won't shoot. Come with me, Toby. We're going home again. No, Hickson. I won't go with you. I'm going to stay here forever. What? This is some trick. Baxter, you've influenced him against me. You're putting words into his mouth. Oh, look, Hickson, will you relax? I tell you, I had nothing to do with this. I couldn't have. Nothing to do with it? You're a devil, Baxter. You tried to steal Toby away from me, and now you're trying to drive me mad! Hickson, will you listen to reason? No! No, I won't listen to reason. I won't. Oh, you beastly man. Oh, Toby. 
Pick up this gun before I hit somebody with it, baby. I've got it, Mel. Say it's not true. Now, stay where you are, Hickson. What? Oh, no. Oh, no, I'll do nothing of this sort. You're insane. Hickson, you're the one who's sick. I'm trying to help you. Help me! You're trying to take Toby away from me. Look, will you let me get a doctor for No! You fool! You'll never get Toby away from me. I'll take him where you'll never see him again. Never! Hickson! Claudia, that man's desperately ill. We've got to get a doctor. I suppose we should have called the cops, doctor, but... Well, Hickson's in the profession, and if he's sick, we'd rather have a doctor look after him. Oh, I appreciate your sentiments, Mr. Baxter. What's made him act this way? What's wrong with him? Well, I can't give an opinion without seeing him, and without talking with him. But perhaps your husband may have some ideas. Me? You're a ventriloquist, Mr. Baxter, but a more successful one than Hickson. And, two, you're happily married, less introspective, perhaps. Isn't it quite possible that Hickson, in his loneliness, his struggles for success, may have become so accustomed to thinking as two people that the personalities have actually become divided? Why, I... I don't, I don't know. You're right. Yeah, I, I can see how that might happen. You mean he, he thinks he's two people? No, Mrs. Baxter, he doesn't think he's two people. It's possible he doesn't know these personalities have become divided. That Toby now might be said to live within Hickson without Hickson's knowing. And Then what's going to happen to him? Well, it's something he'll have to fight out within himself. If we can keep the dummy away from him, he may recover. Oh, but, Doctor, he took it with him. And we've no time to lose. Where does he live? Have you any idea? No, but I can find out. Well, then we'd better go at once. He must be separated from that dummy. <laughs> so here you are, Hickson, right back where you started. Be quiet, you fool. Be quiet. You can't keep me quiet. You never could. Where would you have been if I'd kept quiet? How can you be so ungrateful? I made you what you are. <laughs> you made me until I came along. You were very small time, Hickson. Very small time. You've forgotten that you're nothing but a lifeless, useless stick of wood without me. A lifeless, useless stick of wood, am I? It was I she liked, not you. It was I Mrs. Baxter spoke kindly to. It was I she smiled at, not you. But you wouldn't even be here without me. A lifeless, useless stick of wood. You couldn't even get up the nerve to kill Baxter tonight. Kill him? Yeah. Yes, that's it. You wanted me to kill him. Why didn't you kill him? Then she could have belonged to me. I could be with her forever. Oh, oh, oh you fool. You know that's impossible. You're just saying that. You're jealous. 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 Oh, Toby. Toby, please. Don't say these things. It's the truth. You're a weakling, a coward. Toby, I beg you. You mean nothing to me anymore, Hickson. You're weak. No, no, I'm not. You monster. Oh, more than the mind can bear. I can't stand it. I... I've got to get rid of you. I'll kill you. I'll destroy you. Hickson, take your hands off me. I'm through with you. Take your hands off me. No, I'll kill you. You, you vulgar little beast. Excellent. Stop. Die. You monster. Break your head. Tell me, please. What? Don't. No. No. Talk back. You little Monster. You died, you hear? Now tell me I'm weak. You can't kill me, Hicks. No matter how you try, you can't kill me. You're still a failure. I'll show you who's a failure! <laughs> 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 Toby, what have I done? Toby, Toby, I never meant to. Answer me, answer me, Toby. Excellent, excellent, you in there? Don't wait, Mel, try the door. 
there we are. I'll go first. Look, there he is, Doctor. Man, we're too late. Now, easy now. Perhaps he's only fainted. Doctor, Doctor, look, the dummy. <gasps> Smashed to bits. I can't believe it's real. Easy, honey, take it easy. Hickson's breathing. He's just out for a minute. Oh, Mel. What'll happen when he comes to? And he realizes what he's done to Toby. Oh, how are you, Hickson? Steady now. You're coming around all right. There you see, honey, he's all right. He's opening his eyes. No, 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 don't try to sit up, Hickson. No. Just lie back and be still for a moment. He's looking for Toby. Yeah. yeah. Uh. When he sees him. No, no, no. Oh. Don't try to sit up, Hickson. Your dummy's a bit cracked up, but I guess he can be fixed. Fixed, huh? He said he'd kill me. But I told him he couldn't. Mel. Doctor. Doctor, it's Hickson speaking in Toby's voice. He said he'd kill me. As if he could, uh, Mr. Baxter. Doctor, what about Hickson? Hickson himself. I've never seen anything like this. Oh, Hickson, Hickson, speak up, man. <laughs> Quick, Baxter, put that dummy together again. Well, he's pretty badly I smashed. I don't care. Hold him together if you have to. I'll do what I can. What good would it do, Doctor? It's our one chance to help this man. You see, Hickson? Here's Toby. You see, he's all right. Here he is. Hickson won't appreciate what you're doing, Mr. Baxter. Now you're giving me... Back to him. He thought you were trying to steal me away from him. Mr. Hickson! Hmm? Oh, here it's you, Mrs. Baxter. Toby! Toby, what's happened to you? Oh, you and Toby both had a little accident, Mr. Hickson. Baxter! Mr. Baxter had nothing to do with it. He and Mrs. Baxter are your friends. They were worried about you. They called me. I'm a doctor. Oh, I see. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you all for it. Well, we told the doctor how Toby had been acting up this evening. Oh, yes. Well, now I remember. Yes. Yes, you were a very bad boy, Toby. You said so, so many things that I didn't put into your mouth. You can't go on like this, you know. If the acts to succeed, you ruined us tonight, Toby. It's going to be a long, hard fight to get back. I'm not really angry with you, Hickson. I'm glad. We are dependent on each other, Toby. You know that. Promise me you'll behave from now on. Promise you won't say anything I don't put into your mouth. I promise. <laughs> but still, I can have my own idea. Tonight's voyage of escape into the realms that lie between the credible and the incredible has ended. But we hasten to invite you to voyage with us at the same time next week when we will bring you the strange adventure of a man who searched the Brazilian jungles for a diamond as big as the Ritz. Your ticket for the voyage is merely your desire to join all hands aboard when CBS again presents Escape. <laughs> Dead of Night was adapted by the CBS Division of Program Writing from the Universal Motion Picture. Barry Kroger appeared as Eric Hickson, Art Carney as Toby the Dummy. Escape is a CBS feature production directed by John Moseman. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.